You know that we are not even three days after Donald Trump's latest assassination attempt, the second one, in less than two months. And, well, Karine Jean-Pierre said this. Just to clarify, so you're saying that the president and vice president believe that former president Donald Trump should be toning down his rhetoric? So I'll say this. Uh, president Biden has been clear-eyed about the threat uh, that the former president represents to our democracy. Okay, you have you have just noticed that she's been asked about, you know, this hateful rhetoric that in some way or another is affecting, uh, you know, the safety of uh, Donald Trump because uh, of all these crazy people now trying to take him out and nobody would be surprised that this uh, goes on. Today, there was some kind of very strange, uh, explosive scare in New York City. But then you've been asked that, and Karine Jean-Pierre doubles down on the fact that Joe Biden said that Trump is a threat to democracy. So how does that make sense? I'm going to, I'm going to play the clip again and I try to make, sh uh, make sure that you keep your eyes on Karine Jean-Pierre's body language. Just to clarify, so you're saying that the president and vice president believe that former president Donald Trump should be toning down his rhetoric? So I'll say this, uh, President Biden has been clear-eyed about the threat uh, that the former president represents to our democracy. You, you know what is funnier? Because there's a funnier side of this. In that same press conference, she was confronted about the word threat that she just said. She's saying that Biden is clear-eyed about Trump as a threat to U.S. democracy. So see what happens just a few seconds later. Two days since somebody allegedly tried to kill Donald Trump again. And you're here at the podium in the White House briefing room calling him a threat. How many more assassination attempts on Donald Trump until the president and the vice president and you pick a different word to describe Trump other than threat? Peter, if anything from this administration, uh, I actually uh, completely disagree with the premise of your question, the question that you're asking. Uh, it is also incredibly dangerous. The question is dangerous. We're going to listen to the question again, uh, see how dangerous is the question. Since somebody allegedly tried to kill Donald Trump again, and you're here at the podium in the White House briefing room calling him a threat, how many more assassination attempts on Donald Trump until the president and the vice president and you pick a different word to describe Trump other than threat? Is that a dangerous question? It's a total common sense question. All these this high-profile figures are calling Donald Trump a threat. He has been called a threat just minutes ago in, uh, by Karine Jean-Pierre quoting Joe Biden. So how many times, how many times, or how many attempts, or how many assassination attempts should they go through until they realize, hey, maybe it's not a good idea to be calling Donald Trump a threat, right? Because you know that all these uh, crazy people with uh, uh, long-range uh, weapons and high-caliber rifles want to uh, do to him? Uh, because American people are watching. And to say that, to say that from an administration who has consistently condemned political violence from an administration where the president called the former president and was thankful, grateful that he was okay. And now she's saying that Biden called Trump and he was thankful and grateful that he was okay. But you remember that seconds ago she said that. Has been clear eyed about the threat uh, that the former president represents to our democracy. I mean, how. How can you, in the same press conference, say both things, like 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 nothing, like like that is nothing to you? 
like you're keeping a straight face and you're contradicting yourself and you, of course, you're being asked a question about that contradiction and what is the reply? That that question is dangerous. Now, that question is indeed uncomfortable, but that's what a real journalist does. They ask the in uncomfortable question. I am not a journalist and I like to ask uncomfortable questions. But she has no way to answer that. That's why she has to take down the question itself. This is a manipulation technique. You ask something and they're going to say, why are you asking that? Why are you telling me that? Why are you attacking me like that? By saying that the question is dangerous, she's implying that the journalist is attacking her in any way. Let's see her reaction again. Peter, if anything from this administration, uh, I actually uh, completely disagree with the premise of your question. She disagrees with the premise of his question. He is saying that Biden, Kamala, and her have called Trump a threat to democracy. I, I don't know. She just said that. That is the actual premise of the question. How can you disagree with the premise of the question of something that you have already said? I mean, th this is the kind of moments that I realize so many people need to learn how to spot these patterns, these patterns of speech. And I don't know, how can you be telling me that if you just said that yourself five minutes ago? I'm sure that many of you have already had your exchanges with uh, a toxic personality, maybe a manipulative personality, and you have noticed that they, they change. It's like they change their personality. They change their stance from one instant to the other. And when they do so, they take you completely off your tracks. They, 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 they can drive you insane because she said, how can this person be telling me this right now if they told me exactly the opposite five minutes ago and you call them out for that and they will try to reverse the question against you. I mean, why are you asking that question? You are being dangerous. You are being, you, you're trying to start a conflict and I don't understand why. I completely disagree with the premise of your question, the question that you're asking. Uh, it is also incredibly dangerous in the way that you're asking it. Uh, in the way. It's dangerous in the way that you're asking. I don't know if he was asking that with a chair in his hands about the, to throw it or something because I did not get the dangerous part. American people are watching. American people are watching that you're embarrassing yourself. American people are noticing that you are being, you, you, you're asking these questions in bad faith. That is sort of a manipulation. That is a way of saying, look at yourself what you're doing. A a a are you not aware of your behavior in front of the American public? That's, that's how you try to erode someone's confidence in themselves. As in, wait a minute, what, what did I ask? What were my words? You try to backtrack and think about your question and say that if you actually said something out of the ordinary or if you actually said something hurtful or dangerous, how can you say something dangerous? I, I don't understand. Hell. And to say that, to say that from an administration who has consistently condemned political violence, from an administration where the president called the former president and was thankful, grateful that he was okay, from an administration who has called out January 6th, called, called out January 6th, you know that my opinion about that, whoever 
believes January 6th was an actual insurrection doesn't know what insurrections are. And this is being pushed over and over again. All these lies are pushed over and over again to program the public in believing them. If you repeat a lie enough times, you know what called happens. Out the attack of Paul Pelosi called out and said we need to lower the temperature after the Butler incident. And now for you to make that kind of comment in your question, because it, your question involved a comment and a statement. Yeah, his question involved a comment and a statement, a comment based on something that she has already <laughs> said five minutes ago. President Biden has been clear-eyed about the threat and the former that the prof, former president represents to our democracy. She's she's calling him out and just quoting her on something. I mean, I I I tried to find it funny. It is not funny. We're talking about something that is uh, uh, on a national scale for the United States. It could be a global scale because uh, many politicians act this way. In this, um, let, let, let's say, a not fair way, if not plain manipulative way. And you need to identify these patterns. Because this is something that it's not only politicians. It's anybody around you who wants to take advantage of, well, your good faith and your self-doubt. Because you instantly will say, is it me? Is it me who, who, who did this, uh, who did something wrong? Now for you to make that kind of comment in your question, because it, your question involved a comment and a statement. And, uh, you know, it is, uh, that is also incredibly dangerous. She she would she says again that is uh, incredibly dangerous. I want to make a comment about her body language. Uh, notice her blinking pattern. I'm going to just mute her. I'm going to play. See how her blinking pattern all of a sudden shoots through the roof. She's trying to keep it cool, and you see that. Okay, let me play from here. Now she's trying to make things up mentioning January 6th and I know that at some point there there was a flutter there was a blinking flutter there was like three blinks in less than a fraction of a second she's she's got she's all got also that signature you know smug expression and uh, I think she does uh, another flutter at the end so wait for it Right, I, I, I knew I, I had seen it. There it is. There's a emotional signal here, a reaction. Like she's trying to remain compo composed, calm and collected, but she, she knows that she can't because she is going against what she said herself. But I would like to know what do you think about this in the comments. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Battle Language Guy. Remember to download my 100 Battle Language tips in the description of this video. Much love and bliss.